Okay, everyone, this is the uh, part 29. So we're almost there. We will now look at the two aspects of the ruin and depravity of man, which also help us to understand the real problem inherent in the filial love of man. You must also understand that the deception is exactly that. People under deception or delusions do not realize it. The process of coming out from under deception can be very slow and painful, for it requires a process of self-examination, adherence to facts and not opinions or feelings. The facing of the possibility that one is wrong. The overall thrust of the gospel of Christ is to bring the believer out of the deception he and she or, uh, he she is in. The scripture clearly says all men under a deception, uh, all men are under a deception. In order to come out from that deception, many areas of the human life have to be examined, discarded, and this is a painful process. It is called the narrow way. The first area we are going to look at is in the area in which the judgment of man is done by God. If we examine this judgment closely, we are going to find further proof of the radical difference between the agape love of God and the filial love of uh, natural man. It will help uh, uh, to shed some light and more proof on the fact that love of God is hidden from man, and man does not know anything about it. It is a mystery, a secret that is revealed only to those who are obedient to Christ. We will first look at the books that are used in the judgment process. First, the most important book we uh, must look at is the Lamb's Book of Life. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, those whose names are not written in the Book of Life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. So we, he, here we find mention the Book of, uh, of Life of the Lamb. Who is the Lamb? Quick check of the following will prove who the Lamb is. Uh, John 1, 29, 36, 1 Peter 1, 19, Revelation 5, 6, 8, 12. You get the point. All right. If that does not prove uh, to you that Jesus Christ is the Lamb, your problem is unbelief. We find mention of the book of uh, Lamb's Book of Life only twice. It is not mentioned anywhere else in the Scripture. And there shall in no wise enter in into it, New Jerusalem, the holy city, anything that defileth, neither whosoever worketh abomination or make a lie, uh, but they which are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Here we go that only those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life are going to enter heaven in the holy city, New Jerusalem. Uh, this, of course, is why Jesus said he was the door. Notice that anything else that defileth is removed. What is that? What is it that defileth? Work of abomination or make a lie? Carnal man, flesh man, sense man, soul man, in short, filial love man. The distinction here is blunt. You must be born again. You must be written in the Lamb's book of life. The, Lamb's, uh, the Lamb of Christ is the book of life. Jesus said the only way he, we could find life was if we walked the narrow way to the destination which was where life was. We have found that the life of Christ is agape love life. Obviously then, the Lamb's Book of Life is a book that contains the names of the regenerated. We found out previously that the word overcomer was used exclusively for the agape love regenerated. Narrow way leadeth to straight gate, as to leadeth to life. For whatsoever is born of God, regenerated, overcometh the world. By the way, that... For whatsoever is also born of God lives forever. It's eternal. Anyone who is born of God, uh, and that is anyone who has undergone authentic regeneration, is an overcomer. He has fought the fight of the narrow way and obtained the prize of agape love of union with Jesus Christ. And by the way, that's a very, uh, this part right here, um, agape love and the union of union with Jesus Christ is actually there's a separate union before the agape love it's uh it's interesting how uh the way it is in here how it happened for him was different is different uh in other other cases they all all the same things happened just in different order so we know that we have passed from death unto life because we agape love the brethren he that agape loveth not his brother abideth in death so when one is born of God, one goes from death unto life. Agape love is the pivot point of passage because John uh, uh, says in 1 John 3, 1, that agape love is what causes us to be called sons of God. 
then the terms overcomer, born again, and life all mean the same thing. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath the Son of God hath not life. I'm sorry, he hath not the Son of God hath life. Have not life. I'll get it, I'll get it out of there. I say, if we pass from death unto life by the bestowment of agape love, the Christ is agape love, then he that obtains life in the agape love of Christ has Christ and is in union with Christ. The only life, uh, life listed in Scripture being in Christ is agape love life. Therefore, we conclude correctly that the Lamb's book of life is in fact the book of all those who have gone, who have had agape love bestowed upon them. They are the overcomers the re and regenerated. And this is the record that God hath given us uh, to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Now, it is important to realize how the books are used in judgment. We're going to find that there are two books of life. One is the Lamb's book, and the other is the book that lists every man, woman, and child ever born on earth. It is simply called the book of life. We will see how all of this fits together. The book of life is in reality the book called a book of all naturally born human beings who have natural love in them. The book of life could, uh, could be called the book of filial love life. For all the practical purposes, it will soon be clear why this is so. We find mention of this book of life in several places. We should examine them close for it helps unlock the mystery of the deception of filial love. We have not covered and very controversial subject of the deception of filial love. We have not covered the very controversial subject of eternal security in the Lord Jesus Christ. That can be found in the last book in this series. The long and short of, this, uh, of it is this. Eternal security is an absolute fact only for those who have been regenerated. It will be proven with multiple verses of scriptures that this is a truth even if you do not believe it. The problem with multi -verses, multiple verses of Scripture is that is a truth, even if you do not believe it. The problem with the doctrinal of eternal security is that the false prophets, teachers, preachers, and evangelists claim a regeneration they do not have, and then add the doctrine of eternal security to multiply their deception. Some of the verses we will examine will imply the doctrine of eternal security if you have... Um, life in Jesus Christ. It does not apply to anyone else. There are numerous verses of Scripture advanced by the opponents of eternal security to prove it could not be true. The verses they advance to prove their point categorically state one can lose his position in the body of Christ. This is not a matter of opponents to eternal security and misinterpretation of what is said. It is a matter of where you plug it in to the uh, entire process of salvation. The Bible does not contradict itself. If you uh, if you have two seemingly opposite statements, it is not a case that what one is right and the other is wrong. It is a case of where does it one apply it and what area of our walk to meet Christ. So scripture proves to eternity, uh, eternal security is not only a fact, but also a necessary ingredient to walking a total victory over the world, as will be shown. We will now look at the verses that speak of the book of life and then we will see how all this fits together. Once you grasp it, once very clear, uh, once, I'm sorry, it becomes very clear why the obtaining of agape love is an absolute requirement if one wants to see heaven. He that overcometh and some the same shall be clothed in the white raiment. And he will not, and I will not, blot out his name out of the book of life but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. So Jesus ties being an overcomer to wearing the white robes of agape love, as John did, and his brother, he says of, his, uh, of this, overcomer, that he will not blot his name out of the book of life. That means that the one who becomes regenerated and uh, who overcomes the world by walking the narrow way to life cannot be blotted out of this book of life. This book of life is different from the Lamb's book of life. Here's why this must be true. It is only the overcomers who are not blotted out of this book of life. That means there are other people written in this book whose names will be blotted out. A name has to be written there or it could, be, could not be blotted out. 
So who then, okay, is going to be blotted out from the book? All those who are not overcomers. The book of life is a book in which all who are born on planet Earth are dutifully recorded by the angels that keep the books. That means that your name and my name and everyone's uh, we know and don't know are listed in this heavenly book. This book of, uh, of life is the book of human life, of human filial love. This will become very clear as we proceed. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it for those face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no more place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books are op were open, and another book was open, which was the book of life. And the dead were judged out of these things, which were written in the books according to their works. We have to take a close look at this. There is two types of books open. One is called the book of life. The other appears to be the book of works. In other words, all of these uh, people have a book of works or a complete history of everything they've ever done. Th thought and said, this is known as the great white throne judgment. Every person here is going to have a complete life review and will be judged out of those things that were written in the book of works. But we must ask, what is the standard God is going to use to judge their works? What is his measure? And the sea gave up the dead, which were in it, and the dead, I'm sorry, and death and hell del delivered up the dead, which were in them, and they were judged, every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now, this may be, sound confusing, but it is not if you will bring it all together. Christ said he would not blot out the overcomers a name out of the book of life. All others will have their name blotted out. Okay? Uh, anyone at all that is not an overcomer is going to be destroyed at the great white throne judgment. Notice again that the dead are judged out of the book of works. Their deeds upon earth are going to be measured against the standard of God. Then we find what, uh, uh, what at first appears to be a contradiction. All those who are not written in the book of life are cast alive into the, in the lake of fire. If all people are written in the book of life, then how could anyone not be there? The answer is what Jesus said. He who overcometh will not be blotted out of the book of life. Reason why is all these people are, be, are being judged according to their works, because they were not overcomers. Because they were not overcomers, they will be blotted out from the book of, of the book of life. This judgment is extremely serious. It is a judgment of the eternally damned. The word works, it means to work, to toil, to do, to act, deeds, doing. This is a clearly uh, then a complete record of each human life. The issue of sending a human soul to eternal ruin and destruction is something the Lord does not take lightly. It is not uh, his uh, will that any human, uh, it's not his will, I'm sorry, that any human being uh, uh, perish. The complete record, every second of time, Every deed, every thought, every act in kept, is kept in the books. We would envision this as an internal and external video of everything ever done in that life. God is searching for something. He's desperately looking for something in these books that will exempt that soul from eternal ruin. What is he looking for? What God is searching for is the act accepting Jesus Christ into the inner chambers, into the Holy of Holies. Notice that there are two books here, works and life. Did Jesus overlook anyone? Is there one single human soul that somehow slipped through the cracks is, is he, and is here by mistake? Every second is reviewed. They do not find his, this name in the book of life because Jesus had already blotted it out 1,000 years before. Do you understand this? It says the entire human race is written in the book of life. Then there are those who are covered by the work of Christ. Those that overcame are not blotted out of the book of life when Christ comes to judge the world. They are the only ones remaining in the book of life. The Lamb's book of life and the, the book of life are now identical. They remain identical for the 1,000-year reign of Christ. At the last resurrection, 
Only the names of those protected by Christ are left in the book of life. Now comes the last and final resurrection. The book of life is open. The book of works is open. Anyone that is not written in the book of life is cast alive into the lake of fire because all those who rejected Christ have been blotted out by Christ 1,000 years prior. Not one name in this area of time will work, will, will, I'm sorry, will be in the uh, book of life. The only remaining book they will be in is the book of works. There is now nothing left but works. The works of these people, because they refuse to come to Christ, as he demanded uh, they do, and be covered by his agape love, must now be reviewed to see if they measure up to God's standard of pure agape love. That's a real bad position to be in. <laughs> Just letting you know <laughs> you don't want to be there. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. Okay, he that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth, uh, judgeth him. The word that I have spoken and the same shall uh, judge him at the last day. Now, Jesus says all those who rejected what Christ said will come under judgment of the word of God. His words encompass the entire Bible, all of Scripture. All mankind is going to be judged by the law. We know that what stands behind the law is the glory and righteousness of God, which comes from his inner essence of the pure agape love. The standard by which this judgment is going to be done is the absolute standard of pure 100% agape love. They're going to be put in, put to the test, the agape love test. Each act, each so-called work is held up to the agape love standard. We know because of the fall that no human being has agape love within them. So we know from experience that we cannot even love in our uh, natural human filial love 100% of the time. These folks do not stand a chance. But God is not going to take any chances. He is going to determine how everyone measures up. Did they keep the law of pure agape love or not? For whosoever shall keepeth the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. So now we know that uh, <clears throat> that what things uh, soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall uh, no flesh be justified in his sight, for the, by the law is the knowledge of sin. Okay, so you're you're being told this now. You know what's going to happen. It's all in Scripture and everything else. Everybody knows what's going to happen. So to reject it now is just plain uh, uh, idiocy and not keep going down this path. You know that he wants you to be at the end of that path. So as long as you keep going, you're going to be fine. Okay? Jesus said the world that rejects him shall be judged by the word. Paul says that they will be judged by the law. Good deeds uh, will never justify oneself before God. It does not matter how many good deeds you do. You will never be justified before God. There is no living person who can measure up the standard of God. If you kept all the points of the law all your life and offended even one point, you are guilty before God and must be condemned. We also know that Christ reduced all of the law down to agape love. We therefore realize that keeping the law or doing good works will not avail us of anything whatsoever. This is why Paul said that unless one has agape love, he will not profit, no, he will profit nothing, whatever. He can have faith, believe, Holy Ghost power, give everything he owns away, give his own life, and will uh, still go into eternal ruin. This, Those people that reject Christ and his commands to enter and uh, in to the new covenant of the agape love bestowment have to stand before God on their own merits. Their merit is, in their, is their so-called works. Uh, they are in reality pitting all of their human works, which were done in filial love against the agape love of God in Christ. God is going to deal with them on a basis of debt. Now to him that worketh is the reward, not reckoned of grace, but of debt. All human beings born on planet Earth have two options before them. They can come to via Christ via the straight gate and narrow way, 
and find him and his agape love, which is under grace, or they can opt to reject Christ and attempt justification of being doing good and doing good deeds, which is law keeping or legalism. If you work or uh, for someone and do work for him, uh, then he owes you for the work done because the grace of God shown us through Christ is, was ignored. These people then have only the, uh, their deeds left. They are telling God he owes them for their deeds. Yeah, that's not good. Just letting you know. Okay, the problem is God did not hire them. They were not under his employ. If God went into his employee files and looked, he would find none of them had filed or filled out any work application. For example, let's say you own an apple orchard. You go out and hire some folks to help you pick the apples now that harvest has come. They will fill out their papers, give you their social security numbers, and you officially accept them and in your employ. You agree to pay them at the end of their time based upon whatever you agreed to. Now let us suppose that another group of people who you know not comes and picks your apples. Are you obligated to pay them or to them in any way? You must you pay them because they went out and did the work even though you did not hire them to do so? The answer is obvious. You are not under any obligation, whatever, to them. What these people did, whom you did not hire, was attempt to put you under debt to them. But you are not in debt to them because they did not come into your hire in the correct manner. They are out of luck. They work the, their work was in vain. They end up in total loss. It is this way with the human race. They attempt to justify themselves before God by a multitude of works, and they attempt to put God in a debt situation. It does not work. God showed them how to enter into the new covenant. They refused to do it, do as he commanded them to do. God brought Christ into the world at a very important, uh, at a very important and very visible juncture of time. The Roman Empire was the largest uh, the world had ever known. The entire world knew all about Rome. By bringing Christ into the world at the apex of power of Rome, Christ was visible to all. Jerusalem was highly visible at the time, a uh, visible city uh, of the world. From Judea, <clears throat> the gospel was spread to the whole world. The gospel tells the world that Christ has come to redeem man from the chains of slavery. The gospel also tells man what he must do to partake of this act of God. If we refuse to comply, then we cannot enter good works or no debt or no. Fear them not, uh, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. What Christ was referring to is the books of works. They are open before all, and the judgment of all is from what is written in the books. If human love is a, such a great thing, and if mankind is so essentially good, then why do we have police, jails, prisons, courts, governments, war, military machines, etc.? If a man is so good, why do we have all this murder, rape, theft, arson, beatings, torture, and who knows what? Human love is going to be exposed for what it is, self-centered, corrupt, manipulative, and evil. When God takes uh, even the most noble of, good, of human deeds and applies his standard, they are pitch black by comparison. This is why works do not avail the human soul whatever. Entrance to heaven is not based upon works, righteousness, or works of the law. Entrance to heaven is based upon keeping the sayings of Jesus and doing the will of the Father. That is, in fact, the definition of faith. Faith is obedience. Obedience is doing what you were told. If you refuse to do what, uh, what is told, you do not have biblical faith, for you do not believe God or Christ enough to do as commanded. In fact, you have no real faith and no real belief. It is the work of the human being to believe from his heart of hearts. The straight gate and narrow way are the only method of God, method God gave us, so that we can believe from the heart of the hearts. If we refuse to comply, we may be, uh, believe as deeply as we wish in the soul, but it will avail us nothing. If we examine works in filial love, we can then fully understand why the vast majority of Christians in the entire Christian rejecting world goes into eternal ruin. 
They spend all of their time in filial love works and never walk the narrow way to find agape love and the rest and rest in God. This would be relative righteousness, book of life, narrow way, agape. Okay, you will notice that the gigantic gulf between man and God is separated by the narrow way. This is the only way listed, so it is the only way God gives us. You will uh, also notice that in the illustration that all mankind spend their time in the human filial love side, the relative righteousness side. Their works under filial love may be astounding. They could have flawless works, be utterly dedicated to others, and finally give their lives for others. Let's take a few examples to be sure we understand it. Our first example will be a woman we call Sue. Sue is, um, from the time she, uh, she was a child, loved other people. She worked hard and gave everything she ever earned to the good of others and kept nothing for herself. Through the years, her dedication to the good of man and for her unfailing love to others earned her a great admiration of the world. Her flawless love of uh, others finally obtained her Nobel Peace Prize Award. She was hailed over the world as the model example of the greatness and the power of love. Her dedication and zeal was the subject of magazine articles and books. She became a role model for many others who would follow her. She finally grows old and dies. The angels of heaven come and take her spirit body before the Lord. She is positive, absolutely certain that her standing before the Lord is good. After all, she had done everything the Lord had told her to do. Much to her surprise, she is rejected out of hand. She stands stunned. God wanted to know what she had done about Jesus. He wanted to know where was her agape love spirit, her union with Christ. She did not have the agape love robes of Jesus Christ. Jesus said unto her, get away from me. You do work, uh, you who do wor uh, work of iniquity. The holy angels were summoned, and she is led to the gates of hell, where she is then taken and chained in the fires until the great white throne judgment. Sue's problem was that she did not lay hold of agape love. She was working under the delusion that her own uh, great love for man was the love of God. And that it was what God demanded of her. Had she read the Bible, had she studied it at length, she would have known that she was in grave danger with her love theology. So it was for the many. All the works, all of her righteousness was on the filial, uh, was on the relative righteousness scale. All of her works were done in filial love. She never came to under, know or understand the mystery of God's agape love. And there is the, the books. All right. Our next example is an, um, oh, I'm going to stop there because we're at 290. And we will uh, conclude on part 30.